stroke, also called a brain attack, can be very serious. Nationally, over 130,000 people die each year from stroke, and it's one of the leading causes of disability. Today we're talking to Dr. Bruce Dott, a neurologist with the Riverside Medical Group, about stroke. Well, there are two types of stroke. Uh, the most common stroke is what we call an ischemic stroke, in which there's a blockage of an artery, uh, which causes lack of blood supply going to that area of the brain. The second type of stroke is what we call a hemorrhagic stroke, and this is actually where there's a bleed in the brain. This is much less common. So for our purposes, we'll talk primarily about the ischemic strokes. Okay. And, and with regard to that, are, are there certain people that are more at risk than others for a stroke? Yes, there are. There are basically five major risk factors for stroke, ischemic stroke. Uh, there is uh, genetics. If you have a strong family history of strokes, that increases your risk of having it too. Uh, secondly is high blood pressure. Uh, third is elevated cholesterol. The fourth is diabetes, and the fifth is smoking. So when you talk about those things, the next question about uh, prevention, it sounds like there are some things people can do to reduce their risk of stroke. Certainly, there's, um, obviously we can't do anything about genetics, but uh, the other four we can. And uh, so it's important that they see their primary doctor regularly, they keep their blood pressure under control, they have their cholesterol checked periodically and have make sure their cholesterol is, is uh, doing okay and they need to be medicated for it. And they also need to check their diabetes. If they're smoking, they need to try and quit smoking. Treatment for stroke. If someone happens to have a stroke, well, what is the treatment? Uh, the important treatment is if they can get into the emergency room soon enough, we can give them a clot busting agent uh, that can bust the clot and get blood supply going back to the area of the brain. But we have to give this within the first three hours of the symptoms with this. The problem is a lot of times people don't come into the emergency room soon enough. and. Um, they, they need to know the signs of the stroke and they need to come in as soon as possible. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. What are the signs that people can look for uh, regarding stroke? Well, we have this, uh, this mnemonic called FAST. What the FAST stands for, F is, stands for face, where there's drooping of the mouth with, on one side with that. Uh, the A is where you have weakness of an arm. You hold the arm up and it's drifting down. S is your speech, where your speech may be slurred or garbled, as you can't get out the right words you want to say with us. And T stands for time, which is what I just talked about. You need to get into the emergency room as soon as possible so we can possibly give a station to help reduce the disability. These days with technology and things, what are the prognosis that people can look toward with if they have a stroke? Well, it depends on where the stroke is at and the size of stroke. Uh, but uh, nowadays with our, uh, with our technology and trying to reverse the stroke and also our post-stroke care is very important too. Uh, trying to prevent complications like aspiration and things like this didn't occur. It helps all help reduce the disability as well as rehab with this. So people with strokes uh, have a much better outcome nowadays than what they had in the past. Doctor, what, what is the key takeaway? someone who's watching this should have with regard to their, uh, their themselves and stroke? Well, I think in doubt come to the ER right away, <laughs> okay? I'd rather you come to the ER for something that turns out not to be a stroke than to have a stroke and not come to the ER with that. So the problem is that stroke usually does not cause pain. When people have chest pain, they're in the ER right away. And a lot of people don't recognize the stroke or they think it's just gonna go away, that they're just kind of tired or something like this when in fact they're having a stroke. Yeah, so timeliness again of the element. Mm -hmm. The other thing yes. we talked about, quit smoking. If you're smoking, that's gonna include increase your, right. uh, your likelihood of avoiding stroke. Right, and you also need to have regular visit your primary doctor, make sure your blood pressure is under control, your blood sugar is under control, and your cholesterol is under control. As with so many of the things we talk about here, early detection always the key, so be sure and act fast. Also, for more information, check out these sites or go to riversidehealthcare.org. Join the conversation on social media and check us out on healthcurrents.com. And remember, stay healthy, stay current, and stay tuned to Health Currents from Riverside.